Well, thank you Amit and Sudipto for giving me this opportunity to visit this particular IIT for the first time. As he has already said, now you know I am not a mathematician. So if you do not get much of mathematics in this lecture, don't be upset. So long you get a bit of magical aspect of the mathematics done by Ramanujam. Srinivasa Ramanujam is undoubtedly the most brilliant and the most famous mathematician India has produced in the modern era. He was born on 22nd December 1887 and died very young, 26th April 1920. Not only he had such a short lifespan, he had other difficulties to overcome. Like through most of his life, his financial condition was very poor. He also had some indifferent health problems during the most productive period of his, uh, as a mathematician. And lastly, he didn't have any formal training so far as higher mathematics is concerned. Some people think the third point is not an advantage, a uh, disadvantage rather an advantage because he didn't have formal training in mathem higher mathematics, he was so original and he was not afraid of doing something which is preposterous by normal mathematics standard. With all these difficulties, he reached the highest level as a mathematician. In fact, so far as uh, mathematical ability is concerned, native mathematical ability is concerned, he was placed just next to Gauss and Euler by his contemporaries. The best biography of Ramanujan is this man who knew infinity by Robert Canigal. We all know the history professor at MIT, history of science professor at MIT, and this has been converted to a movie very recently. In fact, Ramanujan was so poor that he developed a funny habit of doing all the mathematical details on a piece of slate because he couldn't afford papers. Only the final result he used to copy on a paper in a notebook. And such a notebook was discovered in 1976, which is now famous as Ramanujan's lost notebook. You see, more than 50 years after his death. And this lost notebook contains 600 original theorems and results which are keeping mathematicians busy even till today. In fact, he has such uncanny ability about numbers that little would say all natural numbers were his personal friends. And whatever you say, any natural number, he would find the speciality or the typical characteristics of that natural number very easily. So we will discuss the magical aspect of Ramanujan's mathematics and maybe the best place to start this magical aspect is a magic square. This is a three by three magic square, as you see, one to nine, uh, nine is written in such a way that you add the rows, any row, or add any column or the principal diagonal, it will add up to the same number, 15. So how many of you remember how to fill an odd order magic square? If not, let me say it requires only two or three very simple mechanical rules to follow to make odd order magic square of any order. You start with the central top square, you write one here, and always try to go diagonally upward to the right. So one, you're trying to go there. If you are crossing, going outside the square by crossing a boundary line, then you come down to the other extreme. Fill up here. Two, again you go there, you're crossing the boundary line, so go to the other end. Three, this is one rule. Whenever you cross the boundary line, go to the other extreme. Now from three, if you want to go here, it is already filled up. So the second rule is you just come down. Four, five, six. Again you are going out, but now you are going out through a corner, not along any boundary line. So if you go out through a corner, the rule is you just come down. Seven, you are going out through the line, go to the other end, go, going out of, through the line, go to the other end. So that's all. So these are the only two rules, either you come down, just below it or you go to the other extreme. For example, this is a five by five magic square, I'll just follow the same rule. One, two, three, four, five, it is filled up, come down, six, seven, eight, go to the other extreme, nine, ten, it is filled up, come down, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, going out to the corner, come down, sixteen, 
17, 18, 19, 20, it is filled up, 21, 22, 23, 24, going out, 25. So, so the magic is over, right? Because any odd order magic square we can do. So the magic remains only with even order magic square. So much so that lots of people, not necessarily mathematicians, have tried to make even order magic square. For example, this person, Benjamin Franklin. We all have heard his name as scientist, inventor, statesman, printer, philosopher, musician, economist, but definitely not as a mathematician. But even he, in 1769, sent a letter to a colleague containing an eight by eight magic square, which is now known as Franklin's magic square, eight by eight. Is the eight by eight magic square, as you see, one to 64. This magic square, rows and columns add up to 260. But the principal diagonals do not satisfy the property. That means they do not add up to 260. But it has some other property like this broken bent squares, bent row, sorry, broken bent row, they add up to 260. Not only that, even 4 by 4, this magic square, they add up to 130, half of 260. Now let us talk of another magic square, which is known as apocalyptic magic square. This is a 6 by 6 magic square, and here all the entries are prime numbers. It is not from 1 to 36. So it took enormous amount of computer time to get to this. All are prime numbers, and the sum is 666. Six, Any row, any column or the principal diagonal will add to 666, which is known as the number of beast according to Christian theology. I do not know who made it, but I know for sure that he did like Ronald Reagan. What he said, you see Ronald Wilson Reagan, 666. But the most famous magic square of even order is by a German famous painter, Albrecht Dürer, in 1514. He made this drawing, Melancholia, painting of his 63-year-old mother. This painting is famous for the details of a German village of that period, but at the background, you can see a 4 by 4 magic square. And Dürer knew that his painting will outlast his mathematics, because he was not a mathematician. But he was very proud of this magic square, which is known as Dürer magic square. It has all the normal properties of a magic square, any row, any column, principal diagonal, add up to 34. But that is not all. If you see, the light is not coming here. If you tick the corners, four corners, that also add up to 34. If you add same colors, like this four, or this four, this four, or this four, they add up to 34. If you add up this 3, 9, 14, 8, it will add up to 34. 2, 5, 15, 12 will add up to 34. So you just cannot get out of 34. However, you add all these four numbers. Here again, you add up to 34. These same colors numbers are th add up to 34. Same is true here. Okay. Now, let us see a 4 by 4 magic square, which is doing round in the internet, and you know, this is the anti-plagiarism as they call it. The person who made this 4 by 4 magic square has put Ramanujan has made this magic square. No, at least no reference has been given where to show that it has been made by Ramanujan. So I would like to say in honor of Ramanujan, because what he does, if you remember the date of birth, 22nd December 1887, so what is done here, you make a 4 by 4 magic square, 22nd December 1887, and then fill up other 12 numbers so that it becomes exactly similar to Albrecht Dürer magic square. Here now, any row, any column, any principal diagonal will add up to 139. Not only that, all the properties, like all the corners, if you add up, will add up to 139. The same column numbers, 88, 25, 16, 10, will add up to 139. 
So, it has all the properties which I showed earlier for dual error magic square, this plus this plus this 139. These 4 will add up to 139. Even this, any set of 4 will add up to 139. And this is something more than the Albert Dewey magic square because these four and these four will also add up to 139, which was not possible in the Dewey magic square. 10 plus 5 is 15, 9 plus 6 is 15, so it is 30. And these four are 38, it is not 34. So it is one step ahead of the Dewey magic square. So enough of magic square. It is just to show the magical part of it. Now let us talk of taxi cab number, which all of us are know the story is famous that when <coughs> Ramanujan was ill and he was admitted in a sanatorium in Putnam area of London, G. H. Hardy, his mentor, came to see him. And the taxi number was 1729. So just to start the conversation, Hardy said, Ramanujan, today I came by a taxi which has a very bad number. There is no special you know, characteristics of this number, 1729. Immediately Ramanujan said, no, that is wrong. This is the smallest number that can be expressed as a sum of two cubes in two different ways. There is no number below this, which can be written as a cube plus b cube and also c cube plus d cube. So that's why it became a taxi cab number. So it looked to Hadi, that is sheer magic. How could he say it so quickly? But it is not magic because now that Ramanujan's lost notebook was found, what is found that we all know the farmer's last theorem or last conjecture that x cube plus y cube cannot be equal to z cube and for any n greater than 2. Actually Euler proved it that it cannot be true with x, y, z integers for n equal to 3. So what Ramanujan did, okay, it cannot be equal to, can it be z cube plus 1 or z cube minus 1? just a little defective. Can I find x, y, z? So immediately found that 10 cube plus 9 cube is 12 cube plus 1, 6 cube plus 8 cube is 9 cube minus 1. So it is this taxi cab number. There he said 1 as 1 cubed. But here he is talking of plus 1 or minus 1. But this is not Ramanujan's math. This is just arithmetic, right? What Ramanujan did, are there other such combinations? how to generate more such combinations. And then Ramanujan's identity from lost notebook shows this. You know, this polynomial, this can be polynomial, the generating function, this can be written like this, this, if this can be written like this, this can be written like this, then A, Z, A, A's, B's and C's will satisfy this equation. A n cube plus B n cube is C n cube minus 1 to the power n. So if n is odd, it will be minus. If n is even, then it will be plus. And then you see 9 cube plus 10 cube, this is his handwriting. This is a diary. 12 cube plus 1, 6 cube plus 8 cube, 9 cube minus 1. Then he also writes these two combinations. 135 cube plus 138 cube is this. Minus 1 and this is plus 1. So this is what now is written, what he says that if this is true, then a n cube plus b n cube is c n cube minus 1 to the power n. If n is odd, it will be minus. If n is even, then it will be plus. So in 2004, one fellow gave the formula how to find a n, b n, c n. This matrix to the power n multiplied by 1, 2, 2. This is how to generate all those a n's, b n, c n. And this has been done as you see in 2004. How Ramanujan did it, nobody knows because it is only his notebook page survives. His slate has been erased. So if you put n equal to 1, you can check, you will get this. And if put n equal to 2, then you will get this, which is this. 135 cube plus 130, these are Ramanujan's numbers. This cube plus this cube is this cube plus 1, this cube plus this cube is this cube minus. So taxi cab number looked like a magic, but it was really, there's a lot of mathematics behind it. It was not magic. Not only that, Ramanujan notebook contained the following formula. If u and v are arbitrary integers, positive or negative, and we define a equal to this, b equal to this, 
c equal to this all in terms of u and v. Then a cube plus b cube plus c cube will be d cube. So it looks like sheer magic, right? All of us remember probably 3 square plus 4 square is 5 square. That will be used if you want to prove this. But not many of us notice that 3 cube plus 4 cube plus 5 cube is exactly equal to 6 cube. Because this is an aberration, this is no pattern, so nobody talks of it. But Ramanujan knew then that will be necessary here. You can see it only contains 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3 square plus 4 square is 5 square, you use that. And 3 cube plus 4 cube plus 5 cube is 6 cube, you use that, you will get this. And now, if you put u equal to 1 and v equal to minus 2, you believe me, you will get a equal to minus 27, b equal to 36, c equal to this and this. So a cube plus b cube plus c cube is d cube. So minus 27 cube plus 36 cube plus 3 cube is 30 cube. You take it to the other side and divide by 3 cube, you get again the taxi cab number. 12 cube plus 1 cube is 9 cube plus 10 cube. So if he had that 1729, he reached it in so many different ways, it was very obvious why could he say it so quickly when Hardy asked what is the characteristics of 1729. That is the taxi cab number. And how difficult these maths are, let's see. Again, two very famous mathematicians, Sarvudaman Chola and S.S. Pillai. He was as famous, I mean, just next to Ramanujam, he was the best Indian student in Cambridge, died very early, and he lived very long, was in Princeton Advanced Studies and taught in Lahore, I think, or Punjab. So, Chawla in 1929, that is nine years after Ramanujam's death, wrote that this number is the smallest integer that can be expressed as sum of two positive cubes in three different ways, not two different ways, in three different ways. So that stayed as like much there, but obviously computer came much later, and now we know actually he was wrong. This is the fourth such number. The smallest number is this. This cube plus this cube, this cube plus this cube, this cube plus this cube. So this is called taxi cab number of third order. T3. The previous one was T2. And now it has been proved that you can have taxi cab number of any arbitrary order, but up to T6 is known. And T6 is a 23 digit number, I think. This is T4. You can express that sum of two cubes in four different ways. This is T5 and this is T6. Okay, let's talk about taxi cab number here. Now, approximation for pi. But mathematicians have a fascination to get series expressions for pi. We all were taught as UG students this Gregory series or Leibniz series. This series is famous. It is really tan inverse x and then put x equal to 1. You get this. It is so famous because even Newton appreciated Leibniz, which is uh, not very <laughs> usual, right? In fact, Indian mathematician Madhava gave this series in 14th century, and this is 17th century, so 300 years before that. This is series is very easy to remember, sorry. This series is very easy to remember, 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 like that, but this is useless so far as calculation of pi is concerned, because 500 terms are needed for accuracy of three decimal places. Now let us see what Ramanujan did. As usual, Ramanujan rediscovered lots of mathematics because he was not trained, like he rediscovered Bauer series. So you may not give credit for this, for rediscovery in anything, but 1910, he produced a magic formula. Only for him it is possible, right? 4K factorial 396 to the power 4 to the power 4K. So this kind of thing, people have to have lot of guts and courage to write it. He wrote it. And you know, this one term of this series gives eight decimal places correct of the pi. And every additional term adds eight more decimal places of accuracy. First term, eight decimal places of accuracy. Each term adds eight more decimal places of accuracy. Actually, a little variation of this is still the fastest algorithm for evaluating pi. A slight variation which has been used to calculate the trillion decimal places. 
well, I mean, I am sure there is no one from math department for my lecture. So, mathematicians are crazy people. Why do they do this? You may think there is no reason, but there are a lot of reasons for them. They want to see something, some pattern in pi. Anyway, so this is the Russian brothers, you see, in 1996, I think, or 1992, they gave this formula. It is a little variation around, you can remember that 4k to the power factor, 4k factorial and 396 to the power 4k, something like that. So this gives one term, 14 decimal places of accuracy. And each term adds 14 decimal places correctly. So this is the first test algorithm. Another famous approximation of Ramanujan, we know pi equal to 3, 1 by 7, that's what we always write. Ramanujan wrote pi to the power 4 is 97, 9 by 22. How accurate it is, let's see. If you have the continued fraction expression for pi by pi to the power 4, 97 is here and then 1 by 16539, if you neglect this in compared to 1, you get 97, 9 by 22. Now, Ramanujan's constant, this number e to the power square root of 163 pi, Ramanujan said it is very close to an integer. This is the 163 is the last of the Higinus number, there is some, you know, unique factorial domain, there is a, some significance, but Ramanujan said this number is very close to a integer. Let us see how close. Now we can calculate, Ramanujan could not calculate it. It is this, this point 99999 and there are 12 nines. So how close it to an integer? It looks like an, you know, transcendental number which it is, but this is what it is. In 1911, Ramanujan proposed the following problem for the readers of Indian Mathematical Journal. What is this? square root of 1 plus 2 square root of 1 plus 3 and you continue forever. What is this number? So no one could give the answer after 3 months he gave the answer as 3. So how the puzzle was created? Because he gave the right hand side and asked to you to produce the left hand side. Let us try the other way around. We write 3 as square root of 9 then 1 plus 8, 8 is 2 into 4, 4 is square root of 16, 16 is 1 plus 3 into 5, and 5 is square root of 25, which is 1 plus 24. So you see, I am getting the right hand side. Square root of 1 plus 2 into square root of 1 plus 3 into square root of 1 plus 4 into square root of 1 plus 5, it continues forever. So, looks, approximation with various terms, you see square root of 1 is 1, then if I truncate it here, square root of 3 is this, if I truncate it here, it is square root of 5, it is this, like this goes to 3. But obviously mathematicians will not take it as a proof because I can do the same thing with 4. 4 I can write square root of 1 plus 15, 15 I can write 2 into 15 by 2, that I can write square root of 225 by 4, then 1 plus 221 by 4, you see, 1, 2, 1, 3, I can go on forever. So 4 is also can be expressed like this. But maybe there is justification, 3, I had this, then this you write n into n plus 2 whole square, then you can easily generalize it. This is n square plus 4 n plus 4, 1 plus this, this you factorize n plus 3 into n plus 1. So you see this can be write, written as 1 plus n square root of 1 plus n plus 1. So every time you get n plus 1. If you start with n plus 1, you will get n plus 1 here, you will get n plus 2 here. So three may be the correct answer. But again, I am starting from the left hand side and going to the right hand side. But Ramanujan's question was, given the right hand side, find the left hand side. How did he do it? The answer was obtained from a typical of Ramanujan type identity. He said, this is true for all x. Now if you put x equal to 2, you get 3 and then get 2 here, 3 here, 4 there. Now the question is why this is true? He got it from an even more general form. He was a master of infinite radicals. He said fx equal to this 
can be expressed as these infinite radicals. Now the question is, he wrote it, only he can write it, but is it true? Let us at least verify it. We cannot prove it, but at least verify it, because that is school maths. Square both sides to get fx square, this comes outside the square root and the x and this is nothing but f of x plus n. So fx squared minus n plus a whole squared, so fx minus this, fx plus this is x you take common a plus fx of n. Now if you say this equal to the first term, then automatically the second term is satisfied. So it is verified that this I can write as x, which is this. It is very easy to verify this. Now put a equal to 0 and n equal to 1 in this identity to get this identity. Then you put x equal to 2 to get the original problem. That is what Ramanujan did in 1911. Well, Ramanujan created lots of functions, arithmetic functions, uh, mock theta functions and other things for which he is famous. But for me, I talk of a funny function by Ramanujan. Y x equal to this, this is the domain of x 0 to 1. There are lots of students here I can find. Can you find what is x equal to 0, what is the value of y? x equal to 0. So 4 and here it is 4, 8 to the power 1 by 3 is 2, here it is 4 and minus 4, so it is 2. And what is the value at x equal to 1? x equal to 1, this is 1 and this is 0. 16 plus 9 is 25, 24 and 1 is 25. So this is 1 and this is also 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So y is 0 uh, is 2, y of 1 is also 2. That is nothing surprising. What is surprising that it is 2 for all values of x. You can put x equal to 0 0.32549, it will be 2. If you put x equal to 1 upon 3, it will be 2. Actually, the first part comes down from 2 to 1 and the second part goes from 0 to 1 and addition always remains 2. So you can add up these as you know weight functions. Now once the result is given, then people like me can easily verify yes it is correct. It is very simple. You just cube it, y cube, you will get here 8, 4 minus 3x plus 4 minus 3x, 8 minus 6x, 3ab and a plus b is y. A, B, if you multiply this, this, this is nothing but this whole squared, you can see that. So you will get this by cubing both sides. Then you take y minus 2 common, you get this. So obviously y equal to 2 is possible and if you solve for y from this, in this range you will get 2 complex conjugate. So y is 2 for all values of x. The only real root is y equal to 2. Okay, this can be generalized, so let me omit that. This is a nice story. This is in Kanigal's book. In 1914, December, Ramanujan was asked by his friend, Professor Mohananovich, uh, we all know him as a great mathematician too, to solve the following puzzle that appeared in the popular English magazine Stand. Sunday morning, he comes to Ramanujan and said, can you solve this puzzle? Puzzle is as follows. There are n houses on the side of a street, which are numbered sequentially starting from 1. The house numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. The sum of the house numbers on the left of a particular house having the number m equals that of the houses lying on the right. It is given that n, the total number of houses, is between 50, more than 50 and less than 500. Determine the values of m and n. That is the question, that is the puzzle. So just to explain it a little better, let me represent it pictorially. This is the house numbers 1, 2, 3 up to m and up to n. So what is the value of m such that if I add these numbers becomes equal to the sum of these numbers. What are the values of m and n? Given that n is more than 50 and 500. So this is what is, I am just copied from 
Carnegie's book. Ramanujan, while stirring his vegetables on the gas fire, rattled out a continued fraction generating all the values of him. No restriction on n, 50 and 500 is not necessary. All the infinite values of m will be coming from this continued fraction. So obviously Prasanta Mahananovish was absolutely befuddled. He said, how did you do it? And this is the answer, sorry. When he asked, how had he solved the problem? He answered, immediately he heard the problem, it was clear that the solution should obviously be a continued fraction. So I emphasize immediately, clear and obviously. Then I then thought which continued fraction and the answer came to my mind. I am sure the students, if you write such answers in the maths exam, your teachers will give you nothing but zero, maybe negative even. So don't try this. So let, let us discuss this problem a little bit. 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to m minus 1 is m plus 1 up to n. This is the equation. If you do a little bit of algebra, you get, I have to solve this equation m square into n into n plus 1 by 2. This is not a new problem. This was done in 1733 by Euler. But to he put a question then answered it. But to answer, uh, to understand his question, we have to know that, you know, these numbers are known as triangular numbers and these numbers are known as square numbers. Because Pythagoras, Pythagoreans, they knew only geometry. For them numbers only have to do shape, size. So Pythagorean classified numbers as, because it can form triangles, these 3, 6, 10 are all triangular numbers and they are of the type n into n plus 1 by 2. 1 is trivial, it is square, it is triangle, it does not define any shape. So you see all numbers, these are called triangular numbers. Similarly, all numbers m square are called square numbers. So Euler asked this question, for what values of n the triangular numbers are also square numbers? That is m square is n into n plus 1 by 2. This problem was solved by Euler and he says triangular numbers with n equal to 1, this is the trivial, 8, 49, all these are square numbers corresponding to m, all this. So the answer to the puzzle is n was given between <coughs> uh, more than 50 and less than 500. So this is the only n and the corresponding m is 204. So this is the answer. Mohalanovish was looking for. And what Ramanujan did, gave all the values of m from a continued fraction. So let us solve this problem, how a normal human being or a normal mortal will do it. This is the equation, you multiply by <coughs> 8 and add 1, you get this. You say this is p and 2m is q. So this equation is of the form p square minus 2 q square equal to 1 where p and q are integers. So this I can easily write p minus root 2 q, p plus root 2 q equal to 1. This is the equation I have to solve for integer values of p and q. By trial and error I can easily find p equal to 3 and q equal to 2 must be an answer. 3 square is 9, q square is 4, so 9 minus 8 is 1. So this by trial and error, the smallest solution I can easily get, which is n equal to 1 and m equal to 1, Euler's first answer. Now once I know the smallest solution, rest of the solutions are trivial. You just square both sides. This is the answer we have got, squaring both sides, you get this. So the next answer is p equal to 17, q equal to 12. which means n equal to 8 because this was 2n plus 1 and m is 6 because this was 2n. This is the second answer given by Euler. Cubing both sides, you get this. So p3 is 99, q3 70. So you get all the infinite solutions once you get the smallest solution. So this is a very famous equation p square minus d q square equal to 1, where p and q as integers. And d must be a non-square number, like we had 2. 
if you put 4, then uh, only trivial solution. Because then p square and dq square both are squares, 2 squares differing by 1, the trivial solution is 1 and 0, nothing else. So, this was known, normally known as Pell's equation because Euler called it a Pell's equation. And normally books are copied from the previous book, so till today we all write it as Pell's equation. Because Pell was a rather, you know, not so famous British mathematician, Euler somehow called it Pell's equation, whereas Farmer did it much before Pell. So, it could have been called Farmer's equation. Not only that, Brahmagupta's equation is now called, in internet you will find now it is that Brahmagupta's equation, because he did it 650 AD. Farmer died in 1665, so 1000 years gap. Because Brahmagupta in his Futa Siddhanta, what he said, if you can give me the solution of p square minus 9 to 2, q square equal to 1 within one year, I will call you a great mathematician. Why did he say that? Because he knew now you cannot get the smallest solution by trial and error. Because here, the smallest solution is this. Instead of 3 and 2, you cannot get these two because there are two variables. You cannot go on trying and by trial and error you get this. This is the really a nasty equation because you see with values of d how p and q varies. If d is 60, p1 is this, q1 is this. If d is 61, then p1 is this, q1 is this. Again, if d is 62, p1 is 63, q1 is 8. So, such atrocious variation with the smallest value of p and q with d makes this equation very, you know, dirty. Actually, now with computers and supercomputers, people are going on solving. So, they have solved even for these d's, where p and q are astronomically large numbers. I cannot write it here. Okay. Now, Ramanujan solution to this, that is the magic part, what Ramanujan did. He got the first two values, 1 and 6, maybe by, you know, you know, just mental mathematics. Because if I have one house, then sum of the house numbers here is 0, sum of the house numbers on the right is also 0. If it is 6 and there are 8 houses, sum of the house numbers on this side is 8 plus 7, 15, and here 1 to 5, if you add up 15. So, 1 and 6, he can get mentally. Then he says, all the values of m, you can get from this continued fraction by truncating at different steps. For example, 1 by 6 if I truncate, then if I truncate it here, next step I get 6 by 35. If I truncate it here, I get 35 by 204. So every step numerator and denominator is giving me values of m and it will give forever. So, all the values of m are obtained. This is this 204 which he was looking for, Malanovich. Now, the question is how did he get this and he, that I don't know. But what is the correlation? Maybe that we can see a little bit. Ramanujan's continued fraction is this. So, if I write this continued fraction as x, I get this. So, this is a simple quadratic equation. And if you solve, you get this. So, 1 upon x is this. So, this is, and if you remember, this was the generating equation. By squaring, cubing, and taking various integral powers, I obtained all the values of p and q. But to see this and this, and then p and q, nobody knows. There are a few layers of mathematics which he could see. This is, okay, uh, all good audiovisual programs has a commercial break, right? So now I will take a commercial break. All that I have discussed so far is available in this book. The book is out of print, but I can rest assured you that you will come within few months again. Because the book is written by me, I call it a commercial break. Okay, now let us go to Ramanujan's next phase as Hardy as mentor. In Cambridge, Ramanujan wanted to be a graduate and Hardy was petrified. He said, why? You create math, you do not give exam in math. He said, no, I will not get a job if I go back to India unless I am a graduate. As you know, Ramanujan flunked his exams in Madras. 
His maths paper he finished within half an hour, three hour paper, but uh, physiology I think he flunked, all others were very poor. So he wanted to be a graduate. So what he did, the course requirement was waived. As he preferred to sit alone in his room, <laughs> he cannot sit in an exam hall to do maths. No examination. But still he has to be given a degree, <coughs> BA Cantab. So he submitted a 52 printed page paper. I uh, uh, say printed because this paper was so long, it had its own uh, contents. Normally a journal has a content page, but this paper has a content page because there is 52 page paper on highly composite numbers. Based on this paper, he got research by BA and this is his convocation photograph. Now let us see what is a composite, highly composite number. A highly composite number is characterized by having more number of divisors than any composite less than it has. That means 4 has only one factor 2, but 6 has 2 and 3. So 6 is a highly composite number. Then 12. The list goes as 6, 12, 24, 36. These are highly composite numbers. Without computer, Ramanujan listed all such composite, highly composite numbers up to this. This is trillion, mind you. And now it is know that he only overlooked one number. This is not listed by Ramanujan, which is also a highly composite number. In such a big list, he missed only one. But obviously, he is not considered great because he listed all the numbers. What he was trying for a asymptotic formula, and just to check the accuracy of his asymptotic formula, he calculated up to this. Calculation was very easy for him. He also found an impressive asymptotic formula to give the number of highly composite numbers up to a given large integer n. He also said, for example, any composite number like this, these are the prime numbers, these are the exponent. So any number can be expressed like this. A can be 0, B can be 0, can be 0 or any integer, positive integer. Ramanujan claimed for highly composite numbers, these integers must be in decreasing order. These are highly composite numbers, you see. 6 is more than 3, more than 2, equal to 2, greater than 1, greater than, uh, equal to 1, equal to 1, like this. All the highly composite numbers, these indices of the prime divisors must be in decreasing order, equal to or decreasing. Now, Hadi Ramanujan did a roundedness of a composite number, which is defined as the sum of these exponents. Like this is a highly comp uh, rounded number because the number of exponents add up to 12. It is much more than most of the numbers around this 1 million. So Hardy and Amani came up with an asymptotic formula for the roundedness of large composite numbers. After 22 years, a surprising and deep connection between the roundedness of a number and the normal distribution of probability theory was obtained by addition Mark Kack. Actually, in a uh, seminar, Mark Kack was presented. Paul Yadish was in the audience. He said, I can connect these two results. OK, happy collaboration continued. And the most famous work of Hardy and Ramanujan is on a partitioning of a number. Partitioning of a number is like this. 4, how can I write it in terms of smaller integers? 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 plus 2, 1 plus 3, 2 plus 2, 4 equal to 4. So partitioning of 4 is 5. 5 different ways I can write 4 using all numbers equal to up to equal to 4. So P10 is 42, P50 is this. This is the question. Any formula for Pn for arbitrary n? And this is where Ramanujan's creativity and Hardy's technical skill was perfectly matched. And ultimately, they came up with a series. And the nearest integer to a series calculated within prescribed limits will give Pn. For example, first six terms of P100, you see how quickly it is converging. It is 0.64 minus 0.318. It is not even 1, whereas up to this, it is so large. So this is the result of their series. And P100 actually is nearest integer, 1.996, so it is 2. 
So, similar accuracy was also found for p equal to 200. Uh, this is very nicely presented in the movie. The person who used to calculate this p 100 or p 200, he took Ramanujan and said, let's see whether you can say this and Ramanujan will give this number. Ramanujan was not happy. He said, I want an exact formula, not this approximation. But Hardy was very happy. He said, no, 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 whatever we have done, we must publish it because exact formula you will not get. You remember you made this claim for the pi n, number of prime numbers up to some number m. And he was shown to be wrong because that was done in 1895. Ramanujan didn't know that prime number theorem has been proved. So obviously Hardy won and the paper was published. But within 20 years, exact result was found by Rademacher. Maybe if they had waited for six more months, Ramanujan would have got this exact thing. Ramanujan also provided a simple approximate formula for Pn. Number of partitions for any number n, Pn is this. And for n equal to 1000, this formula overestimates by only 1.4%. It is only possible for Ramanujan to think of such things that partition of 5n plus 4 for all values of n is divisible by 5. Partition of 7n plus 5 for all values of n is divisible by 7. 7. And parti partition of 11, number of partitions 11n plus 6 is 0 mod 11. You see 5, 7, 11, these are prime numbers. It is 4, 5, 6. So obviously the question should be asked. Next num prime number is 13 and 4, 5, 6, 7. Ramanujan stopped there. Is it true? No, that is not true. But later on he has been found, yes, with 13 I have to add this and it is not 7 but 237, then that is divisible by 13. Now this typical Ramanujan type congruence was done even as late as 1988. There was a conference, Ram, a walk through Ramanujan's garden in Ramanujan Revisited. That was the conference Ramanujan Revisited and Freeman Dyson <coughs> in 1988, in his paper he showed this, that 23 squared 17n 2623 is divisible by 17. 17 is the prime number after 13. Now this is what he says. You had to be a personal friend of seven, both 17 and 23 before you could hope to discover a congruence like this. So Ramanujan had this kind of, you know, friendship with numbers. Ramanujan primes, you know, mathematicians have prime numbers against their names. You know, Marsen prime, Fermat prime, Euclid prime, Pillai prime, Sophie German primes. So Ramanujan also has primes in his name. After returning to India in 1919, he had a two page proof of Barton's conjecture. Actually Chebyshev proved it earlier. He was not the first person to prove it, but his proof is only two page. The conjecture is for every n greater than 1, there exists at least one prime p between n and 2n. So Ramanujan proved it and in that paper, in that proof, he also involved Ramanujan prime, RNN. Number of primes up to x minus number of primes up to x by 2 is greater than or equal to n for all x greater than or equal to rn. And these rns are called Ramanujan primes. First few Ramanujan primes are this, 2, 11, 17, 29, 41 like that. Exactly at rn equal to n, not greater than. Pi number of primes up to rn minus number of primes up to rn by 2 is exactly n. That is Ramanujan prime. Now this Clifford Pickover calls it the most beautiful formula for Ramanujan. That this infinite series and this infinite continued fraction add up to root over pi e by 2. Neither this series nor this continued fraction can be related to either pi or e. But this has to be root over pi e by 2. He says this is the most beautiful formula. Well, this is the last one. In the letter written to Hardy, Ramanujan included the following result among many other things. He said, I have a new theory for divergent series 
and this add up all the positive integers add up to minus 1 upon 12. Obviously, it looked looks horrible, right? How can it was possible? Either we have to change the meaning of summation or do something else. But this result is really routinely used by physicists. When something comes up as the difference of two divergent series and that difference can be expressed as sum of all positive integers, then that is replaced by minus 1 upon 12. As I said, surprisingly physicists now routinely use the result to replace the difference between two infinites. Ramanujan did not know complex analysis because this result is again not new. Euler did it and Riemann did it and Riemann did it as a Riemann zeta function. The value of the zeta function at minus 1 is minus 1 upon 12. But that is through analytic continuity it comes. But Ramanujan had a very huge theory for this. I cannot go through that, but let us see for the students a little bit hotch potch. We all know this infinite JP series 1 by 1 minus r where r is the common ratio, but the condition is r has to lie between minus 1 and plus 1. For r equal to half we know this is 2. This is absolutely convergent series, no problem, this is correct. Because if I take the partial sums of this series 1, 3 by 2, 7 by 4, 15 by 8, it will converge to 2. But if I talk of this series where r is minus 1, equal to minus 1, not less than minus 1 and then I put r equal to minus 1, I get 1 upon 2. So, it is half. So, as if in this formula we are using for r equal to minus 1. Partial sums for c is this 1 then 0 then 1 then 0. So, it alternates it does not converge. So, what we do we say we will take what is known as Cesaro convergence we will take the average value of this partial sums. Partial sums do not converge, but let us take the average value of the partial sums. Average value of the first term is 1 if 2 terms then it is half. 3 terms it is 2 by 3, 4 terms it is half, 5 terms it is 3 by 5, 6 terms it is half. So, you see half, 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 half and the other one is converging to half. So, ultimately it will be half and half. So, I will say this converges to a value half, not the sum, but this is a sum. Actually for absolute convergence series is also Caesar convergence, but not the other way around. It converges to 2 and its Cesaro convergence is also to 2. Average value if you take it will converge to 2. So, c square is this that is easy c equal to 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 and 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 then you multiply you get if you multiply by 1 you get this if you multiply by minus 1 you get this. So, the c square you collect all these terms, but I collect diagonally. So, 1 then minus 2 then plus 3 then minus 4 then plus 5 then minus 6. So, the product is half into half 1 by 4. Add the diagonal terms to get 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 equal to 1 by 4. Once I accept this then Ramanujan results follows, but there is hotspotch, there is no Caesar convergence nothing like that what I can write c square equal to this sum s2 is this, this is what I want to find you write 4 s2. Then I translate it 4 then 8 then 12 then subtract I get minus 3 s2 and this converges to 2 c square and that is 1 upon 4. So, s2 is minus 1 upon 12. So, this is some kind of underhand argument under the table lots of non mathematical uh, niceties all mathematical niceties has been spoiled. But Ramanujan's creativity and magical ways of producing new mathematical results sometimes are attributed very wrongly to his lack of formal mathematics education. He himself attributed to the grace of God Namagiri, his family deity. But in mathematics, even other mathematicians 
great mathematicians like Gauss, Pascal, Cantor, Littlewood, they also believe that inspiration had a divine aspect. In fact, Gauss, who is considered the best mathematician in the history, said that he once proved a theorem not by dint of painful effort, but so to speak by the grace of God. So this is a really fuzzy boundary. So I end the lecture with another commercial break because whatever I said in the second half of the talk is there in the story of numbers. Again, because I have written the book, I call it the commercial break. Now comes the most welcome slide of any talk. <laughs>